How do you make art when you only have a limited amount of time? In this week's video, I want to show you actually 27 minutes of me painting and that is all I had in that particular day to work in my studio. And so I came in and worked for 27 minutes on this piece. I've speeded a lot of it up for you so you don't have to watch the whole 27 minutes. But I just want you to see what's possible in that time. This is part of a larger class that I did for my art tribe group. I think it's so important to understand that you do not need large stretches of time to be able to work as an artist. And in fact, sometimes only having little bits of time is better. It really is. So let's have a look at the painting. Let's have a look at what happened in the 27 minutes and then I'll pop back at the end to wrap up. So unfortunately, in while I was videoing this, just because of the position of the painting and my camera, I do keep getting in front of what I'm doing. So I apologize for that. But once I step away, you can see what I've done. Um, so what I'm doing initially is I had this painting. You can see there was just one layer on it of some quite thin paint. And I decided to come back with some collage. This didn't have a base of collage. So there's none of those discoveries of text and textures underneath that you get when there's a layer of collage. So here I was putting those layers on and really flattening and scraping them down. It's just a case of layering on in some parts. I didn't want to cover the whole thing. I just wanted to put some paper on some parts and then I was eager to get painting again. And so the first marks I made were with white paint and I'm covering up a lot of that collage paper and then scraping at it with one of those baking scrapers. I don't know, they're like bendy plastic and they're for baking bowls. And then I layered back over top again because I decided I didn't like that, then rubbed some of it off. It's all completely, as I've said before when I'm doing this, it's completely whatever feels right in the moment. And I often go back and change what I've done Cobalt blue is not a colour I use very often. It's a little bit too much for me, but I was planning to blend it in with other blues anyway. I'd added some white here and I wanted lots of soft, wet, drippy paint running through other paint. So there's a lot of water mixed in with this paint and that is what's creating all that flow that you can see. But I was aware that I wanted some big bold marks as well. But really, this was just about making layers of blues. But just adding in lots and lots of layers of this drippy paint and letting it flow through. And there is here no plan. There's no idea of what I want this to look like. What my um, beginning idea was, though, because I always start with something, was I want blues and I want fluid paint that flows into itself. Um, and I want boldness. I don't want anything that feels timid. I don't want to be hanging on to what's there already. I want to be brave. And that was all the intention that I set out with. And all the intention really that I think you ever need. You need something. Because if you don't, I find anyway, I need something. If I don't set off with some concept, then I get lost and I have no idea what to do. When I do something that doesn't really feel right, I don't know where to go with it. At some points here, um, I'm pressing paint on with a piece of paper that wasn't particularly successful. So I scraped it back off again. And here I skipped a little bit of filming where I added that dark on the left hand side. This is this mixing up thalo blue, thalo turquoise, a little bit of black to create something that was deeper than the cobalt because I really wasn't enjoying that cobalt. So I think I pretty much at this point had covered up all the pure cobalt and was adding in much more of a more muted, uh, I was going to say sophisticated, that's the wrong word because anything can be sophisticated, but there's something, it feels more complex to me, this blue, and that's just my feeling and my, my personal reaction, not anything definitive. But I'm really liking the energy of all these gestural marks and I really wanted to keep that looseness on this layer, nothing finicky and precious. And if I did start to feel precious, my assignment to myself was to come back in and do something bold and brash and not try to make things pretty since this was not going to be 
a layer that perhaps much of it would show through, if any, because I don't know where I'm going yet. How do I know what's going to show through? Then I started blending with a soft towel and I think that led me into mushing this whole thing up. Uh, the paint's still wet so I can just rub at it with a towel. I can remove some of the paint. Um, and then I started scraping at it. And initially I didn't like this effect but because I know this is a lower layer, these are just effects. But now that I look at it, as it stands, I do quite like it because it created interesting textures, which I can continue to work with. So that was 27 minutes. By then the painting was very, very wet and I left it to dry. And this is how it looks currently. Gosh, that felt good. That particular day I had meetings, emails to do, admin to do, accounts to do. And I only could squeeze in half an hour for painting so I spent about three minutes squeezing out paints getting a bucket of water and all of that and then the other 27 minutes putting a new layer on that painting and getting some really cool effects it's not meant to be finished and when you work this way only taking snatches of time you can't finish paintings um, in one session they're going to take more than one session as you'll see, if you're in Art Tribe, you'll see in the whole class that's this month's class, you'll see that I'm also um, working in sketchbooks and showing different ways that you can work in sketchbooks if you've only got half an hour. Of course, you can also, if you've only got half an hour, even just tidy up your workspace and make it feel more creative for the next time you come back. But staying in touch with your practice every day when you've only got a short time is so important. Because most of us cannot spend eight hours a day in our studio. In fact, I don't know anyone who can do that. Everybody has other things. Even when you work full time as I do on your art, there's so much else involved other than just painting. And I think it's a, an illusion that some people have that, well, I can't do it because I have a full time job. I can't do it because I have kids. I can't do it because I'm a carer for someone. No, you can, but you can't do it for four hours at a time. You might have to work in a sketchbook in the bedroom while you're sitting by someone's bed. You might have to do it in the car after you've dropped, as you wait for the kids to come out of school. You, you, you will find your own way to be creative. You can snatch time for it and it's so important. As I'll be teaching in the class in Art Tribe, it's good for your mental health, your physical health, and there is documented evidence now of the benefits of creativity on both our brain and our body. So I think it's really worthwhile, even if you never make anything that you want to show other people. It's a health benefit, just like exercises or eating right. So if you want to check out that class, you can do so for free because everyone gets a free month if you're not already a member. So drop down to the description on YouTube to the link in my bio on Instagram or to the comments on Facebook and you'll find a link where you can check out more about Art Tribe. You can also download my free Find Your Style guide which is always available to help artists to find their own way and I will see you next time. Take care, bye bye.